again, welcome everybody. Again, we start uh, this evening with the, our uh, note uh, that, you, that you see on screen. Um, and with that, uh, let us dive in. Obviously, and some of this may be new for uh, folks, some of this may be new for um, maybe a review, um, but it's neat, it's, it bears repeating that churches need to be mindful of copyright law uh, whenever your uh, community is gathered, either in person, digitally, or both. So any material that is not an original creation of the church, this is a material that has not been composed by your organist choir director or someone on your staff, be it music, imagery, liturgies, poems, if it's not been composed in your local church, it may be subject to copyright. And when we, as we approach copyright this evening, we approach copyright as a justice issue because copyright ensures that writers and composers are properly compensated for their work. So you may, your mind, in your mind's eye, you may hearken back to a, a more simpler time uh, when you had a church, you had a music program, and you had uh, your everyone with a hymnal. Um, unfortunately, today's licensing requirements exceed the usage model that had been in place for the past 100 years, uh, where each worshiper held a copy of a hymnal, which gave the local church rights to perform and sing a section of music contained in the hymnal. Um, so with, um, with that in mind, we, we have to review on like, what is a copyrighted work, um, and how the church has got from, you know, how the church progressed from that, you know, method where if you had a, a copy of the hymnal or the copy of the, um, book of wor worship that you were okay. Um, so again, um, to use a copyrighted work that will be reprinted. And that means like taking that hymnal, if you didn't have an enough of copies and you needed to make an extra copy. Uh, this even goes for choir, uh, choir directors. If they had, um, if they were short one copy for a soprano say, um, and you needed to reprint that or now in this day and age, uh, in the time we find ourselves in, um, you need to broadcast that you must either obtain written permission from the copyright holder or obtain a license through a licensing administrator or provider. Now these providers um, pro offer prepackaged licensing plans or bundles as, as one, license, one license would call them for a variety of license scenarios on behalf of publishers and artists. So the idea here is that the church pays the licensing provider and the provider pays the writers, the composers, and the artists. So it's a it's an exchange of of um, of rights. It's a re, it's exchange of responsibility, and it also makes sure in all of that that the artists uh, get paid uh, for what they create as creators. So we're going to switch screens here again, and we're going to look at the types of licensing types that we have when it comes to um, uh, licensing providers. Now, the first one that's, that is, pre is presented is print and reprint. The print and reprint is the most common and familiar to church pastors, musicians, organists, and choir directors. I've mentioned this before. This, this license grants permission to reprint lyrics from the hymnal and scores to be used in worship guides and bulletins. So when the church um, migrated from uh, solely re, um, relying on a hymnal and churches began to create worship guides and worship bulletins, that's when this license uh, became important. And that's, if you ask most church secretaries, church musicians, this is the one that's most common. The next one, uh, mechanical license is the license that allows a piece of music to be used in audio form when a choir makes a recording of a concert and offers it as a CD or, in, or now even as a digital download. So you're required to have a mechanical license uh, to do that. 
Um, another type is video synchronization. And the video synchronization license allows um, a portion of a song, like a backtrack, a back recording, uh, to be added to a video in your worship service. Um, and then the performance license is a type of license that allows for, you know, as it implies, it is a uh, performance for the public performance of a piece of, of music. And then we get to, we can kind of get catch up here. Then we have the live streaming and podcasting license. And the live streaming and podcasting license is a combination of a print and reprint mechanical and performance license. So it adds, it takes the, the building blocks of those other licenses that were showing on the previous pages and it utilizes them in a way that it keeps the license model affordable for churches and allows, again, the, the, the um, transition of license authority from the, the and, copy, and, and holds copyright from the artist to the church. Um, and then we have the master license. So you wonder, so you wonder like, how does, you know, um, you may have heard some of these um, uh, places that I will mention, the uh, license um, providers, one license, uh, CCLI, how do they, um, how do they get to do what they get to do? And what they do is they hold a master license in which they can take and divide subsections off to offer uh, services to the church. So, um, so again, and here we come to licensing providers. Uh, we mentioned these already. Um, one of them, the um, one of the largest, is one license. Now, one license is a um, is a provider that will fit sort of squarely on the. Um, offerings that are made in the Pilgrim, in Pilgrim Press and the uh, New Century Hymnal. Not all of the uh, selections that are found in either of the, either of our hymnals are all, are all covered. So you will have to go um, and do a search. As you can see there on the screen, there is a, a place to search and make sure that the, that the work that you are uh, planning to you know, perform during the course of your season or, or, or worship service is included in uh, by that provider. Depending on what type of music that you, um, that you perform in your church, uh, you may also benefit from CCLI, which is, has a broader catalog and um, includes music that is published by DMI. So, in that case, a CCL license um, may be um, beneficial to you, as well would be uh, CCS or Christian Copyright Solutions. So those those three, the Christian Copyright Solutions, CCLI or uh, Christian Copyright Licensing International, or one license. Those are the three main license providers. So, so with that in mind, let me come back to my. Um, camera here and switch gears. Um, so again, I can't stress enough the if you it's you need to check with the provider the list of songs that you're going to perform for a given season. If they are not listed in any of those providers, and some churches that I know, at least the couple that I know in Western Massachusetts in the Episcopal tradition, have all three. Um, and if they're not in any of those three, then you have to contact the publisher or the artist directly to get uh, copyright permission. So I, I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, just holding the license, just to say, okay, I, we purchased one license, we purchased the, you know, the base license. And because we're live streaming, we also uh, purchased what they would call the um, live stream or stream and podcasting bundle, which is a bundle of a, the base license, which allows you to um, uh, take the um, um, 
lyrics that you would find. And not only just, uh, you know, hearkening back to our previous um, point I made uh, several minutes ago, not just to have those, not to duplicate what you see in, in your, in, uh, for a bulletin, but when you have a, I know for a fact, when you have a, a subscription with one license and you, all your music is covered, what you what that like the what the base license allows you to do and i checked this uh, with one license uh it also allows you to provide lyrics of the um piece that you are um uh, singing that particular you know sunday in that particular section of your liturgy um on live stream so this makes um and there's a way to do that with uh, with certain equipment where you can uh, push those lyrics up to uh, your live stream, which makes it easier for people to um, be together, gathered in worship digitally. They don't have to have a a bulletin. So know that one license gives you that um, gives you that uh, opportunity. So the fee structure for one license and CCLI um, is based on your community's average weekly um, attendance or your ASA. Um, so the, and we'll get to how do you, like, how do you track that weekly attendance? It's, it, you know, in a digital, in a digital world that we find ourselves in, it's not easy, but there is a way to do it. Um, know that, you know, uh, if you think that you're, and, and they'll give different, like, you know, from like 100, I'm just making an example, but they'll say from, you know, a, a church that has from, from uh, zero to 100 um, uh, people in, in, in worship, that's one, you know, that's one tier. And then from 100 to so on is another tier. If you find that you're between the tier, it's always to go, it's always to um, good practice to go up. I don't know if you can regulate that. Let's, let's say you, you know, you're, you're not offering your worship services uh, digitally, but, or maybe you are, and suddenly you see this, you know, um, this really increase in, in attendance. Remember that it's, um, it's attendance taken over a broad period of time. So, um, so again, most of the content found in the New Century and Pilgrim hymnals are um, are covered by a one license annual license. Uh, but again, you have you have to check. Um, so the um, the next uh, next uh, conversation is one that's important, and that import in that conversation is uh, surrounds um, reporting both um, one license and CCLI require you to report on a monthly basis those um, selections that you used during your worship services for that month. It is through your reporting that one license and CCLI can then pay the artists. So again, it's not enough just to have the license and then it's not enough just to, you know, not check to see if the um, um, that the particular piece that you want to play is is included in their database or not. But you also have to report report monthly. Um, so that makes that forms the bridge that completes it. Without you reporting, um, then uh, there's no way for the artist to get. Uh, paid. I think there was at one point, if I'm not mistaken, that CCLI you didn't have to report, but I think now now you you do um, you do have to report. So let me switch back again here. Let's go to my slide view. And go to another um, things that are unique to um, uh, worshiping in uh, worshiping digitally, and the first is determining what uh, attendance you record on a Sunday by Sunday basis um, when you offer digital worship. Now, when folks when you're in hybrid worship, it sort of makes it a little easier because you count the you know, count the amount of folks that you have uh, in the in the sanctuary, um, and then you add to those the um, the, the the numbers that you have online. However, like how do you how do you track that? How do you come up with that number? And when we first went into um, lockdown uh, way back in in March, I wonder like how you know I've, I've kind of scoured YouTube videos after YouTube videos, and I 
you know, trying to find an answer of how to do that. And the best way that our church, St. Mark's uh, Church in East Long Oak, found a way to do is to have our um, cameras positioned near us. Or and it doesn't have to be the pastor doing this, but it could be one of the one of the folks on the on the um, on the uh, digital team to have the um, just take note of what that um, number is. You'll see it there in the picture, uh, right next to the live button. In this case, it's 53. Um, and what I do, um, our practice at St. Mark's is to take the peak of that. And people will, as we all know, there will be times when you'll see people um, um, joining and leaving your worship at various times during the actual worship service. Uh, and in the digital in the digital um, church, that is that's typical because the the barrier for entry is, and the barrier for exit is a lot lower than it is if you have to walk in and out of a church building. Uh, but we generally take that highest um, the number um, for that platform. And what you're looking there um, on the left side of the screen is a screenshot of Facebook. Uh, we use that right at our craters at our uh, at our uh, prayer desks uh, at St. Mark's because we also use um, that, uh, our devices to interact, like we are interact, we will be interacting tonight uh, through chat and through um, video, but uh, we use the chat portion of uh, Facebook to take prayer requests and to report. So, uh, so, that, so we're, we're, we're always looking at that. In fact, for, for me, it could be a distraction, but so that's my best way of saying, you know, what you could, the best way to do that. And when you take that number, uh, so in our case, we have um, an example here, we usually have about 53 um, with um, that, that's, you know, worshiping with us uh, on, on uh, Facebook. We'll have about 10 to 12 on YouTube. That's just how our stats on, on that work. Um, we'll add those together and we'll, and we'll, uh, and we'll multiply by 1.5 uh, to allow people uh, who are in worship as a family to count them. So there's no real way that we can you know, we can capture that and we kind of know by who's online given the comments that we're getting in the comment train in the comment stream of who's online and we know that oh you know Jean's on a you know we know that you know she has three people watching. So we 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 you, you kind of got to know the you know you um, the, the folks who are online. But as digital, as we also found out, as digital goes, uh, as we progress in this journey together, you will start to find, especially as numbers are increasing as they are, people will start worshiping with you digitally more and more. And some of the folks that you may see uh, on your, um, who are asking for prayers, if you're, you know, if you're um, interacting like that, you know, in that, in that way on Facebook, you may not know who they are. So know that, you know, you know, it, 1.5 is, is kind of a general uh, way we're, uh, that we're doing that. If I hear of another way, of another metric, and I'm always watching metrics for on Facebook, um, because, I, and I like to use the live number that we're seeing, again, our example is 53, because it wants the worship service, the live worship service is over. And let's say your worship service happens to be on 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. And now you are in now Wednesday. And now you're seeing 200, 300 worshipers. Remember with Facebook, those could be as little as five second views, um, which doesn't really help when you're trying to determine how many people were on, you know, who attended your worship service. Um, YouTube is a little better. Uh, YouTube is um, will provide a um, because I'm from New Jersey. I need a, I need to talk with my hands here. So YouTube will give you an analytics graph that will allow you to know that what part of the service folks were more you know who are watching. In fact, if you pause uh, Facebook, you'll get the same thing. But the YouTube will actually give you numbers associated with that. So. Um, so in any of those uh, um, examples that I, that I gave, um, when it uh, pertaining to church attendance, if I find a better solution, I will uh, make a video and post it uh, for you. The right half of the screen is something that um, comes up 
a lot. Um, and that is, and, and I say a lot, I mean, I'm speaking about my, my context in the Episcopal Diocese of Western Mass. And it came up a lot in the beginning um, because um, the couple of the churches that were um, broadcasting were using that same uh, countdown. You know, our live stream will begin shortly. Uh, they were using that same countdown in, in the beginning of their service, five minutes up. So it was, you know, 9.55, we, uh, those churches would start their live stream. And then after, you know, at 10 o'clock, it would transition to live worship. And during that time, they had a, a um, audio track that they uh, downloaded that they thought rightfully from the YouTube um, um, free music library. And even though it, they were, it was, you know, it was okay to use it, what they found is that um, other folks were using the same track. And so what happened, the, uh, and I'll put, a, I'll, put a, I'll put a name on it, St. Mark's Episcopal Church, uh, for three Sundays in a row, we had, uh, this is when we first started using that countdown, we had a canned audio you know, um, backtrack on, on that, uh, on that uh, countdown. And we got this notification, your video is partially muted because it may contain music that belongs to someone else. And we got that, you won't get it in an email, you'll get it right on your phone as a, as a notification on your shade, on your notification shade. You know, your phone will, you know, will give you, and it's you, and you usually get this, and we usually got it about, seven minutes, uh, 10 minutes after the church service is concluded. And maybe that's because that's when we were really paying attention to our phones or not, but there it was. Um, so our person who was in, uh, Rob, who's in charge of our streaming ministry um, at uh, St. Mark's was like, no, I'm using it. And what, and below that message, your video is partially muted. You have two options. You have uh, the option to, to say, okay, Keep it muted, or you have uh, the option to contest it and and report and say that um, uh, no, we would like to you know no, this is our actual music, you know this is we, this is where we got it from, and for the first two weeks we did that, and the third week it was like okay, this is getting old, <laughs> we know where we got it from, we're still being partially muted, and so we convinced Rob that the best way, and here's here's the best practice, have the organist play a prelude on on a variation on whatever they know and not have it resemble really anything. Um, that's the best way. Um, because there was another instance where we had where we, you know, we got, we were using uh, music that was in public domain. It was one of our hymns and we got the same message. And in that Sunday, we said, no, this is, we're using this, we have the right to use this. In fact, it was public domain, and it, and it was on one license, right? And, you know, it came up, and we're like, no, we, we know, we know what the deal is, we know, you know, that we're not wrong here, and so we said, yeah, you know, we're going to, you know, this, we are using this properly, you know, uh, and reported that back to them. So, um, that just, that's just my limited experience with three congregations, um, so, you know, I, I offer that to, you know, not just so it's, you know, it's um, clear for folks that, you know, even though there's free audio out there, the, in, in our case, the audio, the free audio that we were using was uh, used by an exercise um, organization in India. And they were claiming it. And it was part of their whole, their presentation, you know, so... You know, we would get the same, you know, your, you know, the, the artist, the uh, music that you're, um, that you're part, that you're, um, you know, uh, that you're using, the audio that you're using maybe belong to somebody else and it says the same, it would say the same thing week after week. So, um, so I just better offer, offer that to you. So at this point, oh, and there, another question that I got uh, just today, um, if we purchase a one license annual license and digital live streaming podcasting add-on 
do I have to purchase an additional one-time event license for funerals, weddings, and um, in their example, it was a Thanksgiving service. And the answer is no. Your annual license allows you to, it covers all your services throughout the year for one year. And the key being uh, one year. So technically, um, you have one year to hold all, if you have a repository where you, a page where you have all your video, uh, technically it should be, all those should be removed um, after the end of that one year. So, so with all that in mind, um, we come now to our time of together where we have our question and answer section. Since I did a whole lot of talking, um, it would be nice to, you know, regather in community and, and listen to what may be on your hearts and your minds. So. Can I ask a quick question on that last comment? This sure. is Kristen Diamond. Um, my understanding of the C we have CCLI and we purchased the various licensing for on demand. We added, you know, a as opposed to being in the sanctuary worship to make sure we were covered. But in the past, we've also wanted to show, you know, not from an event standpoint, like you mentioned funerals, but mm -hmm. show movies that were outside of our music licensing and we right. had to purchase those were one time. Yeah. Can you confirm if that's accurate? That is accurate. Yes. Okay. Yes, that is accurate. And in fact, there is a separate copyright. I think I think one license provides, it's either one license or CCLI will provide movie. I think it's CCLI. That CCLI provides. has done one for us in the past. Right, yes. Okay, all right. I just yes. know it's, it's a ever moving and evolving area. It is, and that's the, and that's the, that's the takeaway tonight. This stuff always changes. So, and I, I know that, you know, when, when we first, started live streaming six or five years ago um no excuse me three years ago in the saint andrews and longmeadow the poor organist was like Ugh, you know so but it was preparation for the time we find ourselves in now so yeah but thank you for that question so there's there's a few questions in the chat eric maybe i can read them to you so you don't have to try to scroll sure whatever you want to do there was also a question about um doing the reporting and, and you're figuring out the numbers um, mm -hmm. to account in reporting for on-demand replays on like local access TV. Right. Do you do a 1.5 multiplier or is there a formula? How do you know how, see like in that case, how do you really know how many people are watching? Um, so, and I don't believe the, is the, the, and the, the, um, the broadcaster cannot give you those numbers. Um, so I would do, yeah, I would add another 1.5 on that, just so you're, you know, it depends on your, I guess it would be, it would depend on your time slot. So at least, a, 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 again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but it's the same works in East Long Meadow. We had an eight o'clock in the morning time slot in our local access uh, cable. Um, I think that might get more traction than if you're, um, you're um, of a, previous uh, parish that I was associated with um, was, uh, I think our time slot was like 1 a.m. So, you know, I could just kind of use those two to, to adjust, you know, um, but I would use 1.5. So Allison was asking if you would clarify, you made the comment about um, you have to take down the songs after a year when the license expires. Do you have to, uh, if you're renewing the license? So, that's a sticky <laughs> that is a sticky one because there are churches um you know that keep them up and it's their belief that if they're renewing their license year after year doesn't that get them another year you know and i think you know so i kind of side on that what i will do is i will check uh with uh, one license on that and i will um and when, when I make this recording available to both, uh, we'll make the recording available to y'all. And in that, in that uh, email, I will put that in. So I'm gonna make a, make a note for myself. <laughs> there's, 
There's also a question, and the folks here actually might even be able to help with this about, do we have any idea comparing Facebook um, to YouTube about where you get flagged more often for your audio? Facebook. <laughs> okay. Facebook, definitely. They're, they're, sorry, Tiffany, for just for uh, That's okay. <laughs> It's just passionate. It was like Facebook. Facebook has some like insane algorithm. I it's and it's and I think that the the selection we were playing that one Sunday it was like it was Bach, and it was like not altered. Like it was like it was Bach, and so yeah, they're they they will flag, and they they and, and you know and they're. I mean, from our perspective, it could seem to be a, a, a pain, but really what they're doing is they're protecting the artist. I mean, you know, it's, they, they're, they're doing what they need to do because imagine, imagine if they had a lighter algorithm and, and imagine all the, you know, the terabytes of, of um, data that they're getting per second going through their network and that they have to scan. I would, you know, if I were them, I would have a pretty, pretty bad, uh, pretty, you know, sensitive algorithm as well. But yeah, Facebook is it. So there's one question about um, how do you do an attribution statement when you're live streaming on Facebook or YouTube? Ah, yeah, here we go. Um, that is what I should have done. And let me, um, let me bring that up. So we can continue to take questions and I'll bring that up and then I'll share my screen. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Let's and see. Some, somebody else is asking about the benefits of each of the licensing companies. And I, I think I can answer that while you're looking. Mm -hmm. um, generally, it just has to do with what music you use the most. Different companies tend to cover different types of music. So it's better to, to look in the catalogs to see what kind of music it is that you're, you're trying mm -hmm. to play and find out which licensing company co covers more of that. The pricing on them, I believe, is all pretty similar. Yeah. Did you add anything to that, Eric? Um, nope, that's exactly what I would have said. I know that, um, I know I mentioned BMI. I know that uh, um, that CCLI and uh, CCS cover a lot of uh, works that are you know under BMI. Right. So um, Jane yeah. mentions, she said, we have been flagged, but not muted on YouTube thus far. Um, and she said, we stopped Facebook when they changed their rules. Mm. Right. And that's one of the reasons that um, uh, some churches, like my husband's church, for example, which I'm going to pull up here, um, will have, um, uh, will will stream to three different platforms. They'll stream to Facebook, they'll stream to YouTube, and they also stream to a independent provider such as Livestream.com. Livestream has been purchased by Vimeo, so it would be Vimeo Livestream. So, let me pull that up real quick. <laughs> if you ever had the feeling that you forgot something before a presentation, <laughs> this would be um, one of them. Somebody is mentioning also that that CCS license, in addition to um, the company you were mentioning, BM, did you say BMI? Covered yeah. ASCAP and SESAC? Yes. Um, so that covers, that seems to be more of the contemporary music. Yes, it, it's, it, it'll, the, those providers, again, and you know, we can't, I'm not gonna uh, pigeonhole one church in, or, or against an, uh, over another. But if you if you have more contemporary music, uh, then you would, uh, um, you know, you would be more uh, would be beneficial to go to uh, CCLI or CCS. So let me see if I can get this. I'll share my video screen. Here. Okay. We're coming to the end of Graham's. That's not Grams. Let me go back. <laughs> I have too many programs running. Okay, here we go. 
remember. So in the meantime, there's a question. Carolyn Gillette is a current hymnist who uses tunes in the public domain. Mm -hmm. I paid Carolyn for use of her hymns, but do I also need to worry about the tunes? I would say yes. Um, well, I would I would say this. Make sure that um, the hymns that she is using are, in, and it's my understanding they are in the public domain, correct? Right. That's did, what did that I question correctly? Yes. So then, if if they are, if you know that they're in the public domain, then I would say um, you don't have to worry about them. Let's see. And another question: Do any of the the licensing companies cover instrumental music? Um, uh, so I had a. Excuse me. Not uh, just sacred, but classical. <laughs> right, yes. So uh, there has been, um, so before I go over to that, um, so the folks, the, the person that I spoke to at uh, One License um, said that the um, publishers of instrumental music have been slow to make a, a connection and, and offer their, um, their uh, works to these licensing providers. Since the pandemic has, you know, brought us to where we are now, they are now uh, making up for lost time with great expediency, <laughs> as he put it. Uh, but you, he says, you will find gaps. You will find gaps, so, and and he's and he knew that I was giving this presentation, um, and he said before Thanksgiving, he's like, you know, just tell them that we're work we're working with them as fast as we can, uh, but uh, there there you will see gaps. So thank you to Kristen. She posted in the chat a link to a document on Google that compares the different licensing companies or, or that compares CCLI and CCS. So thank you for that. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm just gonna mirror my two screens. <laughs> This is this is called we need it. I, I need a hardware base switcher. Um, so Allison says we've been flagged on YouTube multiple times. We cut the song once and have disputed it in all the other cases. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to keep reading questions or? Or yeah, keep, keep going. Um, Kristen, Kristen asks, and you you all can can unmute and ask as well if, you, if it's easier. Um, Kristen asks, what do we need to be aware of when embedding YouTube videos into worship and or on web pages? My understanding is the video, if the video allows for sharing, they're covered. If the video allows for sharing, Meaning there's a share button in the bottom of the YouTube video yep. that allows you to grab the embed code, for example. Right. Um, so re 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 uh, do that question again. Re say that question again. So for example, I'm I have an advent calendar calendar for for COVID. Right. It's an online interactive advent mm -hmm. calendar, and some of the days have um, embedded like oh come oh come Emmanuel it, as a YouTube video on that blog post. Mm -hmm. Um, I Googled and I researched and it was a kind of a squishy area, but mm -hmm. by and large it said that if that sharing feature is enabled on that YouTube video, you can use that embed code on your web page. Because essentially it's taking it back to the video. But I don't, it said it was a squishy area. So I just wanna make sure we're right. covered. I do know that, so there was a couple, so let me reframe that slightly. And this may answer your question. There are videos um, that uh, third-party companies such as Igniter Media or um, the, the, there's another one. Um, I know Igniter, Igniter is one of, the, one of the larger ones. And they produce video, what they call mini movies for, um, for churches. And they specifically say that um, you, you cannot restream it. So, um, although there has been a um, some latitude given for um, for um, uh, the pandemic, so in other words, you can't take the video. So, if you use their video within the scope of your worship service, 
and you um, and you used it as part. So there's you know there's there's a front end, there's a back end on um, on the on the worship service, um, and you used the video somewhere within that worship service. That's allowable uh, okay. because that video under the user agreement with Igniter Media, the, the video can be used within the, um, uh, uh, for that, in that use case. You cannot okay. take, and I'll just turn that off because we're not getting to the, those credits. Brand, uh, my husband's church runs a full um, credit at the end of his uh, worship service and I can't find them. Uh, but I will, I will actually put the, um, put the uh, blurbage uh, into the contacts in the, in the reply email. Uh, that I send out when we um, make the uh, video uh, or the webinar um, available as a, uh, a recording. But anyway, the so if you're if uh, Igniter says you're going to take that video and you want that to and you're just going to take it and upload it to Facebook, that's not allowed. If you're going to take the so if you're doing something similar, if you're taking the video uh, with that that person produced and using it solely. I think that wouldn't be allowed. But the, the best thing is contact the person who made the video. Yeah, and I've tried some of that and it's kind of gone to dead space. So in, in, in the effort to cover, I've mm -hmm. made sure I've credited and certainly linked, you know, linked back where I needed to, but it's, and not altered or it's not downloaded video, it's still playing on YouTube, but mm -hmm. it's inside an iframe on the website. Right. So I know I know as a as a web developer that it's always been considered okay to to take an embed code from YouTube and put it on your website. Um, I mean, you do run the risk that that video might go away or that they might swap it out or something. Yeah. Like that. Um, but that's allowable. I think what's trickier is if you start embedding the video, say in a live stream, and then you record the live stream. Now you're recording the video. That's a good point. Thank you very much. That makes it very clear. Right. right. Thank you, Tiffany. I did find the um, the um, the verbiage, and so it what we do here uh, at the uh, Congregational Church of Summersville is say what we're saying here. Hymn, hymns used in this worship service are published in the New Century Hymnal by Pilgrim Press and used by permission. Other music performed during this worship service are used under license of onelicense.net, and then you must put your license number. So that's the that's the format that I. So the important part there is other music performed during this worship service is covered under onelicense.net and the number. So um, Deborah shares we were flagged on Facebook for spoken word. Apparently, our lay reader who was reading the gospel had a voice whose timber matched that of an equity factor, <laughs> and the algorithm caused the recording to be pulled. We appealed, and after reviewing, Facebook released the recording. So yep. that's, that's, that's typical. <laughs> like I'm telling you, you know, thank you for sharing that. I mean, that just brings home the point that you know they are their algorithm is it's out there. <laughs> <laughs> um. Jane shares our church has used a good bit of music from Convergence Music Project. The CMP licensing works without anything else. These are original works for anthems and special music and sometimes hymn type music. So okay. that would be a good resource for us. Yeah. On CMP. Our website. Yeah, CMP. <laughs> I'll save the chat. Thank you. Thanks for that. So. Uh, I'm sorry. No, somebody else said we've been including our actual license number as part of our credits at the end of our worship. Is that a good thing to do and necessary? Yeah. I think you just answered that. I think one license requires it. One license requires that, that number to be included somewhere in the service. Uh, and I think for at least for the, the folks um, that are, you know, that you saw listed there on, on that broadcast, uh, on that worship service, um, First, you know, these the folks who are in that service are younger, and so they like to see their name on screen. So it becomes like a, it kind of becomes like a, a thing for them. So, so know that. 
Sarah wrote, we include this message in the prelude slides and again at the end of the service and also site specifics on the first slide of each song. Permission to stream mm -hmm. podcast, yep. much music in the service obtained from one license. Yep. License number. Yeah, you can also do it that way. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled at the participation and, and, and the questions. Thank you. So there was a question about, do you call out each individual song, hymn, or prelude with the artist and publication date on the attribution? I wouldn't, because remember, you're reporting. You, that's part of your responsibility is to report. And there you go line by, you know, song by song, line by line. <laughs> if it makes, so let's say this, if it makes you feel comfortable doing that, then continue to do that, if that's what you've been doing. And Steve asks, and this is a big, a big question, for copyright, is there a distinction between recorded and non-recorded services? Yes. <laughs> like, Expand on that. Yeah, like recorded or re, uh, recorded or live services that the church, that the church is producing. Well, well, I think I know one. You know, the question has come up some about so if you're streaming a service out on Zoom, mm -hmm. is that different than if you then record that stream and post it. I think the same rules apply. If the, if the, if you are, if you are mechanically, and again, go back, goes back to the mechanical. If you're mechanically distributing and then um, sharing that um, and performing that, even though it's digital, if you're performing that ag again, yes, it would, it would, I would follow the same protocol that you would use if you were um, if you were live streaming. So yes, if you if you're if you're in Zoom and then you're you know if you're uh, distributing after afterwards or during, yes, yes. And so even if you're so even if you're doing if 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 even if you're I would even go as far as if you're doing Zoom worship, make sure you have the the podcasting and the um, live streaming bundle. So that was. Steve Griffin, who asked that, and I'm not sure he's at his, <laughs> at his, oh, there you are. I didn't know if that helped, Steve, or if you wanted to say more. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that answered my question. Okay. Um, let's see. Sarah asks, would any of these licenses cover any kind of artwork or spoken word, et cetera, yes. or something else? Yeah. Yeah, so I believe um, one license, I know CCLI also, I think, has music and art. Huh. Yeah. But also, apart from these licensing, um, um, you, if you're using artwork, be sure that the artwork that you're using, um, you have copyright permission from the artist to, you know, to, to use. Again, I'm thinking back to the artists, um, you know, not on, not on uh, Unsplash, but on uh, something like, uh, like Igniter, um, where they, pr that's, this company will, you know, provide churches with um, stock photography. Um, made specifically for use within a worship service. So lower thirds, um, scripture backgrounds, that sort of thing. Um, you have to check, you know, again, because pandemic, they're allowing that, you know, allowing their, um, uh, their the work to be extended to live streaming, but uh, their work was originally not intended for live streaming. It was intended to be used uh, to um, aid in, again, and they come from a different, you know, um, tradition than ours, but theirs was primarily to assist churches who project using a projector in, in a house, using a, in, the, in the, uh, the worship setting. So <laughs> our church is uh, in the process of developing a photo bank uh, collected of images from church members. That way we don't have to worry about that. Exactly. Do we still need to cite that even though we've collected them in-house and everyone's just like put it in the bank don't worry about person, to person. I would, I would say like um, to protect the church. Mm -hmm. I would say, um, you know, images used, you know, 
and have the whoever took the whoever took the uh, the image the shot whoever created it because again you have a you have a pool of of um of uh, creators mm -hmm. okay well that that would help later too if somebody stole the picture from you exactly right. <laughs> that you can you can clarify right. where it came from yeah like for example we had um there was a situation that I knew that I heard of where a poet we, we mentioned spoken word and there was a poem that was read and this particular artist this writer um has bots that scan for for th their work and um you know it's um i think it's done through a service and so you know they i'm not saying that the church needs to do that but um but yeah it's protecting you know at least put put a putting an acknowledgement on it that it is belongs to the church is, is not a bad thing so we've we've run out of questions in the chat does anybody else want to um say something <laughs> oh there's a message um or handbell recordings yeah i think that falls under that would fall under like instrumental recordings, and I think if you look and uh, nod, I can't see y'all, but nod if it's like you know if you if you see this gap, you know, of, of things that are provided for handouts, and you you click and you look and you're like, oh, I'm not seeing that. That's where that would, um, you know, they they cover some stuff, but they don't cover a lot of it. So that was. And I'm going. Right. I'm going back like two churches again. I'm just that was in response to Martha's comment in the chat about. Um, getting permission for handbell recordings. Mm -hmm. She's saying the publishing department at, department at Jeffers Handbell Supply is helpful. Oh, okay. They they are they act as agent for many publishers, and if they can't grant permission themselves, they will uh, refer you on to the proper publisher. All the contact information. Oh, nice. I just had this done yesterday for some solo recordings. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thank right. you for sharing that. And Martha shared Especially that yeah, email address. Coming. That email address is in the chat if anybody needs that for a handbell choir. That's all. Yeah. We'll grab a copy of the chat. So. And it's possible some, Sarah writes, some one license covers some songs. Mm -hmm. Well, and Jeffers would pass you on to one license if you were asking about something that um, was covered that way. Great. Thank you. Anybody else have comments or questions or or wonderings? Jane is. Yes, I have yeah. a question. Go ahead. Um, clip art and backgrounds for for videos that I produce. The clip art I use is part of our church's um, clip art page, clip art library. Is mm -hmm. do I need to cite that or? And you're you're speaking of the you're using clip art that the church published that you're using in your bullet in your sunday bulletin it's that type of stuff that, that would be available for the sunday bulletin i'm using right. that in when i make the lyric videos for the hymn okay i would reach out to the clip art folks okay right or read the read whatever the terms are that that mm -hmm. come is it a subscription or a website yeah, it's a subscription I oh it is a subscription yeah. okay yeah I'll, I'll check that out yeah Thank you. Yeah, so I think the 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 idea is when in doubt, call them. You know, contact them. Do others have questions? Other questions? We're coming on eight o'clock, so it might be you know the witching hour when people get tired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that's about at all. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a couple thank yous in the chat so yes, thank you you're, you're quite welcome what i will do now is i will put up um my yeah that's a that's what i want to put that one up let's see here right here let's put that up. <laughs> i'm just full of surprises i mean <laughs> I'll put up my contact information. So thank you all for being here. Yeah.
Um, I'm, I'm going to mention how grateful I am that Eric is on the staff and say, send your questions to Eric. <laughs> Definitely. This is, this is always such a gray, squishy area that it's difficult. It is. And we're all kind of learning as we go. That's right. And um, as you see, my contact information is on screen. As I see heads nodding down to write and record. And we, we will post this recording and we'll keep adding copyright resources to the conference website um, as we find them. So feel free mm -hmm. to check those out. And if you all don't mind, we'll be emailing you the next time we're doing a, a webinar like this so that you can, you can come again. That's right. That'd be great. <laughs> all right. Thank yeah. you. So my, the uh, next uh, webinar that I um, will be, I, I would, I'm thinking will be in um, will be in a video format first. So we'll, I'll uh, I'll uh, make a video available where you all could you know um, you know watch it, and then we'll have a uh, we'll have a Zoom session uh, like we are having now, where we can just chat, so that you know so that we we can really really dig in without. You don't get to hear me, you know, for 20 minutes at first. We get we get our discussion can actually be be broadened and we could build more community that way. I, I feel at least that's my idea. So, but thank you all. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you for joining and gathering. Yes, thank you, and, yeah. and best of luck as you go through Advent with yes. your online worship. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Tiffany. Yes, no worries. Thank you, Marilyn. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Take care.